Hello everybody and welcome back. My name is Carrie and today I am doing my October book haul. A lot of books so I'm not really going to go into in-depth synopses but we will get into those. First however I do have a question. I am thinking about doing a bookshelf tour so if you have any thoughts or tips on whether I should <laughs> or how I should go about doing that, what you would prefer, let me know down in the comments because it's quite an intimidating project to be honest. That said, the books. Alright, these are in no particular order as to whether I when I bought them because I just stacked them up. First one is The Rape of Europa by Lynn Nicholas. This is a non-fiction book about all of the treasures that the Nazis stole during World War II. This is The Lusitania by Diana Preston. This is also a non-fiction and this is about the sinking of the Lusitania which I believe was a civilian filled ship uh, that was sunk in 1915 by Germany. Yeah. The only thing I'm not certain about in that sentence was whether it was civilian. I believe so. I believe that's why it was such a big deal. But definitely a tragedy. Curious. The next two are a set. I didn't buy them together because I didn't see them together. But the first one is The Feast of Roses by Indu Sundaresan. And the second one is Shadow Princess by the same these are actually the second and third books in a trilogy. The first one is on its way because I need the first one. But these are all about the family of Shah Jahan, who is the man who built the Taj Mahal. I absolutely love that family. I think they are fascinating and horrible and wonderful, depending on who you're talking about in the family. One of my favorites, basically the only person in that family I know is Jahanara because of the uh, Royal Diaries series for middle grade, but I've been really looking forward to learning more. Whether it be through fiction or nonfiction, I don't care. I just want to go back into the time and the culture because it is beautiful and rich and amazing and I'm so excited. Then October was my birthday month, so a fair number of these are gifts that I got with gift cards or on sale or because, you know, it was my birthday. But this is one of the ones that I got with a gift card, and it is Six Degrees of Scandal by Caroline Linden. I read romance, not ashamed. I just kind of felt like buying a romance, so I did. This is about Olivia Townsend, who is widowed, and apparently Jason is her first love, and they didn't get it together the first time, so we're doing it now. Then I have The Never Tilting Word World English by Rin Chipeko. This is about a world which is ice on one side, fire on the other. There's a very thin habitable place near the equator where humans can actually survive. And that's where this takes place. Uh, let's see, there are got generations of twin goddesses who have long ruled it. And then one sister betrayed a prophecy and that's how we get the two spheres ruled by each their own goddess. And so now we have two young goddesses who separate, set out on journeys to heal the broken world. I'm intrigued. We also have War Girls by Tochi Onyebuchi. I have not read his other books, Beast of Made of Night and the sequel, both of which I own, but I am very curious about this one. It is set in 2172 with uh, global warming, which is a thing has basically entirely destroyed our planet because obviously. And there's a civil war between Nigerians and Biafrans over mineral rich land. We have robots and bionic limbs and artificial organs because there's, you know, radioactivity because I'm sure if something nuclear blew up like Chernobyl. But uh, I am very curious about this. It does sound more science fiction than fantasy, but I'm okay with that. Well, I was very excited about this one because it was only $7 for both of these. And it is Adams and American Dynasty by Francis Russell and Jefferson, a revealing biography by Paige Smith. These are nonfiction books about two of the presidents of the United States. And we know I'm always down for history. I'd say a lot of books, right? We also have The Tsar's Last Armada by Konstantin Pleshikov, which is about the Battle of Tsushima, which is during the Russo-Japanese War, I believe. Definitely the Ru Russo-Japanese War, which absolutely shook the Western world because, God forbid, an Eastern power should have defeated a Western power, which is what happened in that war. Japan won, Russia lost, and everybody went, oh my god, the world is ending. The world didn't end, we're fine, we're all here, we just had a couple of world wars in between. 
neither of which were started by Japan, by the way. Enough editorializing. I am very curious. All I know about the Russo-Japanese War is that Japan won and Western world freaked out. I'm intrigued to learn about this. Alright, then we have Shadows and Strongholds by Elizabeth Chadwick. I should probably show you the cover. And this is set in 1148 England. And yeah, pretty much there's nobility in politics in this one. I do have another one of her books somewhere on that shelf. I haven't read that one either. There's a theme, I buy books faster than I can read them. But I am intrigued. Ooh, one of the prettiest books I got this month, Crier's War by Nina Varela. I've seen a couple things about this. People seem to really like it. This is a YA fantasy with the tagline, impossible love between two girls, one human, one maid, a love that could birth a revolution. Okay, so there's the uh, Otome, I think, who were designed to be the playthings of royals. I'm guessing something like robots. And they took over and made humans servants slash slaves. So that's the premise and the basis of this book, and uh, sounds good. Actually, I had to get this one when I saw it. It is The Time Traveler's Guide to Elizabethan England by Ian Mortimer. I mean, do I really need to say much more? This is a nonfiction. It uses a lot of contemporary resources to show us what life was like in Elizabethan England. I think this will pair very well with the books I have by Ruth Goodman on similar topics. Then we have The Assassin's Wish, Wies, Cries. You know I should know what this actually is. The Assassin's Curse. Wow, oh there I see it. Reading is apparently not a thing either today. The Assassin's Curse by Cassandra Rose Clark. This is the start of a trilogy. And our main character's parents try to marry her off to a pirate clan. She runs away. She has an assassin after her. She accidentally activates a curse. Sounds good. Short. Probably get to it soon. Next we have Beyond the Black Door by A.M. Strickland. This is a another YA fantasy where our main character is a person who can go into people's dreams. But she has this other little talent where there is always a black door in other people's dreams. She touches it occasionally and there's a heartbeat beyond it, and then one night she does the unthinkable. As the synopsis says, she opens the door, and all hell breaks loose from there. To be honest, this was more of a cover by than anything, but the premise also sounds intriguing. Then we have A River of Royal Blood by Amanda Joy, which is on my November TBR. This is about two sisters who basically sort of have to kill each other. Um, it's... Yeah, two sisters, they have to kill each other if they want to keep their thrones, and then our main character finds out that she's not- her sister is not the only one who wants her dead because there's an assassin after her not sent by her sister. Sounds intriguing, I really like the cover. Next is Grave Maidens by Kelly Kuhn. This is another YA fantasy. She wants to be a healer, and then the ruler of the kingdom falls ill and her sister is chosen as a maiden to be sacrificed for the king, because why not, to join him in light, death, or whatever. And then our main character, Kamani, sees it as what it actually is, which is a death sentence and not so much an honor or a sacrifice or any of that nonsense. So she sneaks into the palace and politics. One of the books I am actually the most excited about getting this month is uh, In Order to Live by Yonmi Park. This is a autobiography about Yonmi Park, obviously who was born and raised in North Korea, and then things went wrong, and so she and her family escaped. First to China, then South Korea, and now she's in the States. She was born in 93 or something. I think she's younger than I am, which is absolutely terrifying because nobody younger than I am should have to go through any of that. Nobody, nobody should ever have to go through that, but that's not the point. The point is I'm very excited about this book because it is hard to find anything about conditions in North Korea beyond what we see. It's the point of a dictatorship, isn't it? Whew, I'm never going to be allowed in any country that doesn't do well with free speech. The Shadow of God by Anthony Goodman. This is a historical fiction novel. That was redundant. Anyway, set in 1522, which is part of the reason I got it. Elizabeth isn't born yet. She won't be born for 11 years, but Henry VIII is on the throne with Catherine. I think they're 
relatively happy. Not great because she hasn't given us I digress. This is... It says, the true story of the clash between the West's greatest cultures and religions on a battlefield that would test their courage and resolve. Basically, this takes place in the Ottoman Empire, and there's war. Sounds interesting. Ooh, this one was fun. This is A World on Fire by Amer Amanda Foreman. This apparently is Britain's role in the Civil War in the States. I didn't know the British were involved in the American Civil War because I thought it was, well, a civil war. We kept it between ourselves and killed each other over states' rights and slavery and, I don't know, whatever happened, the state South lost and thank God no more slavery. I, again, didn't know the British were involved, but apparently they were, so I'm gonna read this nice 800-page book and find out. I also had a very lovely day when I went, I believe for my birthday again, and I wanted to finish off the Nathan Hale series. There were four that I didn't have and I now own. And when I went to reach for them, there was this boy, couldn't have been more than 10, who was sitting there and I had to reach over him. So he, I said, excuse me. And when he saw the books I was reaching for, he got very excited. So we ended up having this whole conversation about these books and it was great. I love it when that happens. Anyway, these are the remaining hazardous tales that I don't have. And they are a raid of no return, which is World War II. I believe it's the Doolittle raid. I think so. Uh, and then we have The Underground Abductor, which is about Harriet Tubman, if you couldn't tell. And then we have Alamo All-Stars, which is about the Alamo, which the states actually lost. And by the states, I mean Texas, because Texas against, I want to say it was the Mexican-American War was the Alamo. It might have been, yep, yeah, it was definitely the Mexican Army, Mexican Army, the Mexican-American War, which would have been the 18. 40s because then we had the Spanish-American War in the 1890s, which is where we get Roosevelt. Lastly, again, I, I digress a lot, we have Lafayette, which is clearly about Marquis de Lafayette from the American Revolution. All of these have their own color schemes, and I've read all four that I owned before this, so I will be getting to these quickly. Yes, then we have The Queen's Lover by Francine Duplessis Gray. I don't speak French, I'm sorry. This is about Madame de somebody. Oh no, nope, this is about Count Axel von Fersen and Marie Antoinette. Because I don't know if it was true or not, but it was definitely rumored and probably true that she was sleeping with Fersen. Then we have City of Glory by Beverly Swirling, which is about Old Manhattan. This is set, oh, it says the backdrop to America's second war for independence. Nobody calls it that. It's the War of 1812, if you even know about it, because it's a two-year war fought predominantly over the fact that Britain keeps coming into American waters and taking our sailors. I digress again. Let's see. Poised between the Manhattan woods and the sea that is her gateway to the world, the city of 1812, it is vibrant but raw a cauldron where the French accents of Creole pirates mingle with the brogues of Irish sh seamen and shipments of rarities and silks from Canton as, as sold at raucous Pearl Street auctions. So, it sounds interesting. I basically don't know anything about that time. Then we have Paris 1919 by Margaret Macmillan. This is a nonfiction about the six months after 1919, so after the end of World War I, uh, when the president of the States, Woodrow, Woodrow Wilson, British Prime Minister David Lloyd George, and French Premier Georges Clemenceau meant to shape a lasting peace, apparently. I mean, obviously they tried. It gave us about 20 years, but not the point. That's what happened. I don't really know anything about World War I either. The penultimate book is Pandora's Locks, The Opening of the Great Lakes St. Lawrence Seaway by Jeff Alexander. This is a nonfiction again. I'm really feeling nonfiction lately. About when the locks and canals were opened that connected the Great Lakes to the Atlantic. Specifically, this book talks about the environmental disaster that occurred after that because of all the species, invasive or not, they came in and apparently, and I mean it makes sense, decimated the Great Lakes ecosystems. So I'm very curious because, I mean, I love Lake Superior, it's my favorite lake ever, but sentimental reasons. So I'm very curious to see what this has to say about the canals and the shipping industry that has made Duluth such a big town. And then the biggest book, and the last book, is 
Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire Illustrated Edition. I do not own the first three yet, I will get there, but this was on sale for half off. So as opposed to the $48 it costs in the States, it was $24. And I had a coupon, so it went down even further, which was very exciting because these books are not cheap. But this came out in October and I got it probably a week later. I've flipped through it. I have not read it because if I, when I go to read the uh, illustrated series, I want to read them in order, one through seven when we eventually get there. But I don't have the first three, so I'll, I'll get there. Uh, anyway, this is the fourth book in the Harry Potter series. This is definitely a very heavy book. The fourth book in the Harry Potter series, and we have the Goblet of Fire, and he who must not be named, and all that fun stuff. So, I need to reread these. Not the illustrated edition just yet, obviously, but I need to reread the series. A lot of books, I told you, but that's all of them for October, so let me know what you think down in the comments below, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!